You're watching Better Business Bureau's Business at its Best, brought to you by Ataraxis. You've got employees, we've got solutions, human resources, insurance, benefits, and payroll. Our business is your business. BBB's Business at its Best. You make a purchase and the product or service does not live up to your expectation. You contact the business hoping someone will make it right. But what's next? For the next half hour, we show you what it means for a company to be responsive. Being responsive is one of Better Business Bureau's standards for trust. It is a trust builder giving you, the customer, much greater confidence in a business. On today's show, we help you create the Customer Failure Recovery Program. It's a step-by-step -step system to act fast, keeping the customer and your company's good name. Then we take being responsive inside your company. We show you what to do to keep the peace among employees. Employees. And we go inside the shop for a conversation with an auto mechanic about his rules for being responsive. By the way, we're talking about being responsive right now on Twitter. Ask your question, hashtag BBB Trust. Big thanks to our media partners, Local, 8, uh, Local News 8's Now Channel in Idaho Falls and KTVB's Idaho's very own 24-7 in Twin Falls and Boise. Well, when you think about being responsive, you should also consider the legal ramifications. And when we say timing is everything, a quick response can save you a lot of money by keeping you out of the courtroom. Dr. Bill Russell is Executive Director of Community Relations, also the General Counsel for NNU. Thank you so much for being with us today, Great Dr. Russell. Now. So let's start off and talk about some of those things that a business needs to be thinking about as uh, as they think about being responsive, especially from a legal standpoint? Well, you have to understand that the relationship you build with the customer is a big key in the ultimate question of whether they decide to sue you later on. I like to think about the notion of doctors and lawyers who have become so distant from their patients and clients and then they wonder why people sue them. As a business owner, you have a chance to maintain a relationship that minimizes the chance of getting sued and that's important. So often we, you know, and we just had somebody in the in the shop uh, this last week that said, you know what, I received a complaint from Better Business Bureau about one of my customers. I chose to ignore it, and uh, and take it into small claims court. And he said, you know what, after I did that, it didn't work out so well for me. This idea of, of seeing a, a dispute through the court process can be very expensive for a business. Well, and as a lawyer, I'm always happy to see people pay lawyers a lot of money, but as a business person, that's not your best answer. If you can avoid the courtroom, that is always the first choice. There are virtually no exceptions to that. It is expensive and it's risky to go into a courtroom. You never know what kinds of influences are gonna, going to work on a judge or a jury. You have more control if you're managing the process yourself. Is, is there ever a time when a quick response would not be appropriate? You know, I think there's a balancing act. You have to respond quickly, but you better know what it is you're talking about. So the concept of, of just shooting from the hip is not what we're talking about when we talk about quick. I think the game is to process the complaint, get the information, and then react quickly from that point forward. Okay, excellent information. Dr. Bill Russell, NNU, thanks so much for being with us today. Have a great day. And when we come back, do you have a checklist or a measuring tool, I should say, a business can use to avoid legal liabilities? We're going to give that to you. Also coming up in the show in just moments, we go inside that mechanic shop to show you what being responsive is all about and some of the questions you should be looking for as you take your car in the shop. You are watching Business at Its Best presented by Ataraxis. Our topic today is all about being responsive. You're watching Better Business Bureau's Business at its Best, brought to you by Ataraxis. You've got employees, we've got solutions, human resources, insurance, benefits, and payroll. Our business is your business. BBB's Business at its Best. 
You make a purchase and the product or service does not live up to your expectation. You contact the business hoping someone will make it right. But what's next? For the next half hour, we show you what it means for a company to be responsive. Being responsive is one of Better Business Bureau's standards for trust. It is a trust builder giving you, the customer, much greater confidence in a business. On today's show, we help you create the customer failure recovery program. It's a step-by-step -step system to act fast, keeping the customer and your company's good name. Then we take being responsive inside your company. We show you what to do to keep the peace among employees. And we go inside the shop for a conversation with an auto mechanic about his rules for being responsive. By the way, we're talking about being responsive right now on Twitter. Ask your question, hashtag BBB Trust. Big thanks to our media partners, Local, 8, uh, Local News 8's Now Channel in Idaho Falls and KTVB's Idaho's very own 24-7 in Twin Falls and Boise. Well, when you think about being responsive, you should also consider the legal ramifications. And when we say timing is everything, a quick response can save you a lot of money by keeping you out of the courtroom. Dr. Bill Russell is Executive Director of Community Relations, also the General Counsel for NNU. Thank you so much for being with us today, Dr. Russell. Dale. So let's start off and talk about some of those things that a business needs to be thinking about as uh, as they think about being responsive, especially from a legal standpoint? Well, you have to understand that the relationship you build with the customer is a big key in the ultimate question of whether they decide to sue you later on. I like to think about the notion of doctors and lawyers who have become so distant from their patients and clients and then they wonder why people sue them. As a business owner, you have a chance to maintain a relationship that minimizes the chance of getting sued and that's important. So often we, you know, and we just had somebody in the in the shop uh, this last week that said, you know what, I received a complaint from Better Business Bureau about one of my customers. I chose to ignore it, and uh, and take it into small claims court. And he said, you know what, after I did that, it didn't work out so well for me. This idea of, of seeing a, a dispute through the court process can be very expensive for a business. Well, and as a lawyer, I'm always happy to see people pay lawyers a lot of money, but as a business person, that's not your best answer. If you can avoid the courtroom, that is always the first choice. There are virtually no exceptions to that. It is expensive and it's risky to go into a courtroom. You never know what kinds of influences are gonna, going to work on a judge or a jury. You have more control if you're managing the process yourself. Is, is there ever a time when a quick response would not be appropriate? You know, I think there's a balancing act. You have to respond quickly, but you better know what it is you're talking about. So the concept of, of just shooting from the hip is not what we're talking about when we talk about quick. I think the game is to process the complaint, get the information, and then react quickly from that point forward. Okay. Excellent information, Dr. Bill Russell, NNU. Thanks so much for being with us today. Have a great day. And when we come back, do you have a checklist or a measuring tool, I should say, a business can use to avoid legal liabilities? We're going to give that to you. Also coming up in the show in just moments, we go inside that mechanic shop to show you what being responsive is all about and some of the questions you should be looking for as you take your car in the shop. You are watching Business at Its Best presented by Ataraxis. Our topic today is all about being responsive. And welcome back to Business at Its Best. Anytime you have a product or service that is made or delivered by people, there are going to be problems. Most people realize that those problems can happen just about in any situation. But the difference in whether the outcome is positive or negative depends on how that problem is handled. Time is of the essence. Greg Carlson joins us with On Track Coaching. Greg, thanks so much for being with us today. So let's talk about this idea of timing and why it's so critical to keep that in mind as we talk about being responsive to our customers. Well, people, when you're handling a problem, people judge you first by how you handle that problem and how quickly you handle that problem. You know, have you ever gone out to dinner with a group of people and maybe they've made an error on your, your dinner and by the time they bring it back corrected, everybody else is done eating? Mm. You might even get that for free, but you're not happy with the way that problem was rectified. And it's created problems across the, across the table Absolutely. and timing and everything exactly, else. Exactly. So, that's why I always tell a company to have a customer failure recovery program. You know, we train customer service, but part of customer service is just that, how to take care of problems that happen in the business. So give me an explanation of what a customer failure recovery program well, would be. Well, first of all, you have a plan, and you have a plan that you work, 
and you train. And you, you train your people on how to handle any customer complaint that might come along, whether you're in the restaurant business or a service business or whatever it is, how, what are the steps that we go through when we handle a customer's problem. So you're going to be shooting holes in a variety of things. What, what are our liabilities and what could be happening as you develop this plan? It's got to be custom depending well, on your industry. The plan, it is custom, but the plan is who takes care of it? How does it get elevated in the importance? Sometimes customer problems get pushed up to the manager's desk and he or she puts them in the inbox and they don't get taken care of right away. Mm. So if you have a plan in place, let's say code red, and everybody knows that we're going to handle code red expeditiously, then it gets taken care of and people know how to take care of that problem. So the first step in our process is develop, develop a, plan. a plan. Okay, and we've got some, uh, we've got the words to go up on the screen. If, if folks are taking notes at home, they can follow right along. So after we develop the plan and we work the plan. Right, work the plan and train the plan. This is the key, empower those closest to the customer to be able to take care of the problem. Mm. I'm sure people have heard of Nordstrom's their claim to fame is that their sales representatives on the floor can handle a customer problem on the spot. The sooner and quicker you can handle that problem, the better off the customer walks away and feels about it. And then I have a feeling that you've got some timing issues that you've got to be watching. Set time goals. In other words, organizationally, company-wide, we will solve a problem in X amount of time. And have that as a goal. And have, let people time and how rapidly they take care of a customer. We want to have the facts, know how it is done right, and take care of it as quickly as possible so that the customer feels that they have been taken care of. And then one of those things that I always appreciate is the call afterwards Absolutely. or the visit afterwards. Did we take care of everything for you? Follow up. Sometimes people go away, they will tell you they're okay, but as they walk away, they go away mad. Mm. Follow up, We've rectified the problem, make sure that that individual has walked away feeling that Yes, we had a problem, but you took care of it, and I'd use your business again. Without that follow-up, we'll never know what's happened. All right, Greg Carlson, it is on track coaching, OnTrackCoaching.com. Folks can find you there. Great information for us as you work throughout the entire state of Idaho helping businesses succeed. Thank you. And you know what? We are talking about being responsive right now on Twitter. Ask your question. Be sure and put that hashtag BBB Trust in there. You can follow me as well, DDBBB. Uh, we would love to talk to you right now on Twitter about this idea of being responsive. This edition of Business at its Best, we're focused on being responsive as a customer. You have an expectation that a business is going to deliver a product or service as promised. However, those mistakes are going to happen. It's a trust building opportunity or it could be just another way to lose a customer. Next, being sure that you have a culture of responsiveness by being responsive to your employees. You are watching Business at its Best, presented by Ataraxis. Welcome back to Business at its Best. Our topic today being responsive and now we move inside your business. You know, disputes between employees are inevitable, but if left unresolved, they can disrupt your business's productivity. They can sap morale and even cause some good employees to quit. Don't believe even for a moment that the only people who are affected by a conflict are the participants and avoiding that conflict and hoping it's just going to go away. That's not going to work. It'll make it just worse. Dr. Marilyn Melcuri, or Dr. Mel as we like to call her, it joins us Thank on you. the show to talk about this. So good to have you with us. Yeah, so thanks. what are some of those first steps that an employer needs to take to resolve that internal conflict between employees? Okay. Well, it's recognizing the conflict first. It doesn't always have to be a physical altercation. It can be something as subtle as someone feels their feelings are hurt because the air conditioning is set too cold or heat too hot. Mm. So knowing though they can be very subtle and, and then cause rational people and to be left, irrational. And they just sit there and fester. They fester can be even worse. So you need an, op an environment of open communication where employees are willing to come to talk to you, let you know about these things, and then as a manager, you, you create the environment where you are listening and receptive. And you actually okay. have some tips for us for those managers and how to address and handle these types of conflicts. Right, exactly. And part of that listening, it is active listening, really paying attention. Mm -hmm. Let people tell you their story, okay? Because they will have a perception of the conflict. You're not initially trying to find out who's right or wrong. You're just trying to uncover the needs. So really listen to the story and then as a manager, you have to bring the big picture. 
because they're focusing about me and how they feel they've been wronged in this conflict. So kind of bring a reality as far as the importance of the overall business and the operations, but active listening first kind of helps open up and get things started. So not just saying, well, so I hear you're hot. What, what right. do we have to do to fix yeah, this? Yeah, yeah, Not exactly. the right way to approach it. No, huh? be very empathetic to the employee. And again, you want to uncover what really is underlying. It may be something that is a petty dispute that is really not the root cause. And so by telling the story, they can, you can gain more information. And now that we've, we, we're active listeners as yeah. managers, you have three specific things that uh, we should be right. doing to go through this process of helping them to resolve the dispute once it's identified. Resolve, yeah, and this is where some skills as a manager really come into play, because you will have to help these employees come to some type of agreement. Okay. You know, do you really agree on what the problem is? Do you agree on the steps that you're going to have for the solution? And you gain buy-in for what is going on. And it starts with just finding some common ground. Common ground, that's exactly right, yes. And so then you move on to what is going to satisfy those needs, mm -hmm. all right? And so you work through the problem solving with the employee and what, what ultimately are they all going to agree on. And we tend to keep following up with, uh, coming up with this follow-up follow up term. Again. Same thing. throughout the course of the show. Right, because people in talking with them may agree when you're sitting there, and then when you go back to work and resume, they may go back to some of the disagreements and the conflict. So having a follow-up and a check that yes, everyone has agreed, you've satisfied what has been the conflict, because as you said, it just doesn't impact the if it's two people. Um, within an office, people can start to take sides, and mm -hmm. you can see it escalate and absolutely and it doesn't kill. have to. It does not have to. Dr. Marilyn Mel Melcuri with College of Idaho, thank you so much for being thank with you. us today. Excellent information. You know, business at its best is here to help your company be the best it can be. Here's a be responsive checklist. Ask yourself these questions. Do you make it easy for customers to talk to you? Customer comment cards and having employees ask every customer at the end of every job, did we exceed your expectations? How can we be better next time? It's one thing to ask the questions, but then you need to be sure you empower your employees to make it right if there is a problem. Then simply follow up. We keep talking about this. You're going to see this over and over again. A few days after the job is done, follow up with a phone call to be sure the customer is happy. And remember, when you see that BBB accredited business seal, that business has made a promise to be responsive. We are talking about being responsive right now on Twitter. Ask your question. That hashtag is BBB Trust. You can follow us at DDBBB. And next on Business at Its Best, how's this for philosophy on being responsive to customers? One mechanic says, treat the person like they're your mother or wife setting out on a cross-country trip in the car. Go inside the shop and hear from the owner. Coming up next, you are watching Business at Its Best, presented by Ataraxis. And welcome back to Business at Its Best. Ataraxis makes this program possible each week. The company takes care of the day-to-day -day work of HR, benefits, and payroll, so a business owner can focus on growing the business. Stephen Soleil is with Ataraxis and joins us today. And Stephen, we have, we've spent this time talking about being responsive, and, and at the beginning of the show, we touched on the legal aspects. But when I think about a business holding on to I-9s and having employee information, addresses, social security numbers across the board, the bad guys, the scam artists know this, and they are constantly trying to hack into computer systems to get this information. So let's talk about what are the business's responsibilities in the event of a data breach and they start losing this important information. Yeah, it's uh, when you start to think about it, there's a lot there that a business holds on to. And you've got to make sure that if you keep it in a computer, that the computer is secure. Mm. You know, I mean, you don't want to be sitting in there and logging social security numbers in for all your employees into a computer that might sit out in the open that somebody could easily pick up and walk off with. Or that somebody is surfing the web with and downloading viruses, opening <coughs> email with, downloading viruses. Exactly. You need to have a computer that's separated off of the system and not being used for anything else other than that sensitive information. Yeah, or at least it's secured from the network that way. Okay. You know, if you don't have those things, you're better off to keep it all in paper and file cabinets than you are to put it on a computer if you can't ensure that it's safe somehow. So you're working with businesses. You have offices in Idaho Falls and, and Boise, and you're really working across the state, as you talk to business owners, do they grasp just how big of an issue this is? 
Um, some do, some don't. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of them are so busy growing their business and working exactly. on it that they just don't think about these things. Uh, but you know, all the time government's throwing something out there that they've got to look out for. Uh, I-9s are a perfect example of how they have to be stored. So they have the responsibility to not only the, the business, but also the government to make sure that they're doing those things correctly and how they do those. But they also need to make sure that they're protecting the data that they have. And if they don't do that, then, then they have legal liability from their employees. And there have been employment suits where a business owner did not protect the information and it got breached, whether it was by another employee or an outside source. So let's go through this process. The business owner, they're doing everything within their power to protect the information, but a hacker gets into the system and gains access. This is where the be responsive aspect takes Right. take shape. So when we talk about being responsive, what are some things that need to happen? You know, if you know of a breach that occurs, the first thing you need to do is decide, figure out who was harmed or mm -hmm. possibly harmed. If it was just your employees, you need to make sure you notify all the employees. Um, when that's happened, a lot of employers will pay to make sure that their credit's checked for a while uh, or that they're, if they have to change bank accounts or anything else, that they take care of the expenses for those things. If it's client information, you need to be as responsive and as quick as possible to get to your clients and say, this information was possibly taken from our facility. You see it all the time with credit card statements. Everybody's gotten that letter that says our system possibly was breached and your, car your card may have been taken as well. So if something happens, we'll take care of it. And 1.8 million people are getting that letter as we speak exactly. because of what's just happened in the last couple of weeks on, the, on that front. I, I remember seeing the email from you yeah. guys that said that. So yeah. it, that's a big credit card company that has to do that, but every business has that responsibility and they need to be responsive in making sure that they get that out to their clients. Because if they're harmed by it and it can go back to them, it shows that it was from their business, they're responsible. Inaction is not an excuse, all right? Uh, no, it's not. Steven Soleil, Adaraxis, the company. Folks can find you online, adaraxispeo.com. Dot com. Thank you so much for being with Thanks, us today. Steve. And we are talking about being responsive on this edition of Business at Its Best. Right now on Twitter, go ahead and ask your question. Hashtag BBB Trust. And you can also follow us at DDBBB. Next on Business at Its Best, auto repair shops. They're often stuck with a negative stero stereotype. There are plenty of great shops, though. We're going to take you inside one, showing you how they're earning your trust through being responsive. Throughout this edition of Business at Its Best, we've been showing you the importance of being responsive, how to watch for it if you're a customer, and how to put it into practice if you own the company. Now, let's see how one Idaho company keeps the focus on being responsive. We stopped in to All Things Automotive and Diesel in Idaho Falls for a conversation with owner J.R. Henderson about what it really means to be responsive. There should be no question when they come in for a repair, there should be no questions from when we start the repair to where we end the repair. I know any of my customers can walk through that door and I can take an hour if I have to and we can sit down and we can talk about it. You know, if there, if there was an issue, you know, hey, let's talk about it. You know, don't get mad. Let's say, okay, this is why we did what we did. You were expecting this, but it was actually this. Let's just talk about it. That's, that's all it comes down to is communication. That means it starts right there on the phone with the person at the front counter. So let me call them and see how far out it will be. And then can I give you a call back? Being responsive and being available to customers starts at the top. And then it works its way down to all the employees. I tell my guys that you work on a car like you're going to send your wife and kid across the United States in that car. You treat every single car that way. If there is an issue, we can tell them, hey, this is an issue. It might not be an issue right now, but it's going to be down the road. We need to take care of this. So when they leave, they know exactly, okay, this is what kind of shape my car's in. These are the repairs I did, and then these are the repairs we're going to need to do. The rapport you build with, with your auto mechanic is the key factor. If they don't take that extra time to spend time with you to understand what you need, why should you be taking your car there? Once we're done with the repair, we keep the old parts until the car leaves. That way if there's any question, we can say, okay, here's your old parts. Um, and there's not a lot of people that I don't think they know that we keep the parts, but if there's ever any question, hey, here's the part. You know, and then like every Friday we'll go through, we have little milk crates, we'll dump all the parts out, start over fresh the next week. And that's another thing is, you know, if, if you take your car somewhere and they say, we did this and this and this, 
where's my old parts? Okay, we take the time to, we tell them, this is, it does this, this is how it works, this is how it has to come apart, this is what's going to happen. You know, I really like a customer that'll come out in the shop and get involved and we can say, hey, here's the part, here's why it failed, this is what we're going to do to fix it. You know, it, it's not rocket science, it's cars. You know, um, you can explain anything on a car of how it works and then they make a better informed judgment. I mean, as far they should understand this is the part, this is what it's going to take, this is what we're going to do. If they know more about their car, they maintain it better, they last longer, things like that. Now, before we leave you, we're going to offer you a few tips that we've collected throughout this show to help you make your business the best it can be. If someone has a complaint about a product or service, don't jump to conclusions or get defensive. Get the facts and respond quickly, but invest the time to investigate. If you're the person filing the complaint, provide those facts and avoid being emotional about the process. As we learn from Dr. Mel in talking about being responsive to employee conflicts, find some common ground where everyone can agree. And then finally, empower your employees to make it right. Thank you so much for spending the last half hour with us talking about being responsive and improving the business climate in Idaho. We have, hope you have a tremendous week. We'll see you back here next week for another edition of Business at its Best.